All right, uh, so what I've gone and done, my computer's being really laggy, so I just deleted the, the bit we're showing to do this. I converted this to a mesh again, same settings as before. Um, and then I just sort of isolated one tree from the rest and deleted the extra geometry. So what I'm gonna do is export selection for this. And I am just going to throw this, uh, where am I gonna put this? Sorry, I should have thought of this. Um, Okay, fine. I'll just put it somewhere weird. Um, no, 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 no. Tree. <laughs> um, all right. Uh, so this is this is basically if you need to get like really close up on a tree, uh, it might save you a little bit of sort of hand modeling of a tree. Um, so I'm gonna go in and just find tree. Actually, it should just be one of the earliest earliest things. Very helpful. Thank you. Why is that even on? Okay. Biggest issue with me is just finding files on my computer because I have so many. Okay, tree. Um, all right, so click and just drag. We have a tree. Make sure you hit the edit mode. Um, otherwise, you're gonna keep populating trees in here. Um, if you do keep populating trees by accident, like you know, do something like this, and you're like, oh god, what have I done? Um, go to edit mode, layer, and then just clear that, and it'll get you uh, your your nice one tree back. Um, so what I'm gonna do, and this is really janky. Um, but again, like you can see, this is a pretty low poly tree. Uh, I'm just gonna go ahead and where am I going? Sorry. Uh, I'm going geometry tab, and you want Dynamesh. Um, so just sort of try. Usually the default is gonna give you something really grainy, but what Dynamesh does is it basically goes through and it overlays uh, this really weird sort of grid onto your mesh where like it just tries to get everything as even polys as it can and it's also gonna close off all the caps in this um, that were previously open. It also unfortunately merges all the branches together but like depending on what you need, it's not the end of the world, it does that. Um, but in this case, I'm maybe gonna slider that resolution up a tiny bit more and then Dynamesh that again. And you can see that now um, if you want to preserve sort of more of the shape of the tree, it's gonna allow you to do that. Um, and with that extra geometry, you can go through relatively easily and just sort of like smooth out um, the the tree so that you don't at least have those really wonky sharp edges. Um, so it depends really on like what you're looking for, like the settings that you'd want to use. Just kind of got to like play around with a little bit. Um, but then you'd be free to sculpt on this, do whatever you want to it. Um, you know, turn it into some crazy other tree. You can shift branches around, do whatever you want. Uh, and then when you're done, because obviously you don't want a 200,000 poly tree, that's not even obviously that much, um, go to Z plugin, Decimation Master, and you can I usually do pre-process current. Basically it's just gonna like stash your tree so it can process stuff faster. And then here's this percent of decimation. So if you hit 20, that's gonna leave you with a mesh that is 20 percent of the density of this original mesh. So in this case, probably around 40,000 polys. So go ahead and decimate current. If you were watching the transition, you can see that now it's like kind of triangulated and weird. Um, so not great if you're really into quads. Um, very convenient if you want to like reduce the sculpt for 3D printing, which is usually why I use this. Um, and you can see that like from far away, you don't, you can't really tell the difference in the mesh at all. So I've taken like a five, milli po five million poly sculpt and brought it down to like 150,000 polys, which is like nuts. And you get pretty much no loss of detail for the most part. Um, so I'm gonna estimate current again, gone down to 5% of the original mesh, 10,000 polys. And you can see again, it does a really nice job of preserving the shape. It does, um, it'll sort of stash polys in the higher density curvier areas and then like areas like lower on the tree, it just, really does a crazy job stripping them out. Um, so I'll do one, <laughs> okay. 1% 1 takes you down to like hardcore, uh, like game mesh. Um, but anywho, so let's just do something maybe like three. Cool, that's my current. And the nice thing again is this is really fast when it processes this. Um, if I had something with like 5, 000, 5 million polys, it would take longer, but still. Um, so once you're ready to get this into Maya, let's just do like tree, black. I do not follow my naming conventions, um, <laughs> ever. <laughs> They're all insane. Um, all right, so let's, again, find the original tree mesh. Another weird thing about ZBrush is if you're ever, for some reason, like having issues, why, what are you doing? Why is my computer being so laggy? 
Um, if you export something from Maya and then export it, put it into ZBrush and export it again, it'll be like a quarter of the file size. Uh, Maya is phenomenally terrible. Like you can see, this has, I think, more polys than it started with, and it's a smaller file. Uh, Maya is notoriously bad at compressing files. Um, but yeah, so you can see, again, original tree, little tree underneath it. Um, if there's sculpting detail, that would be on there. Uh, obviously, you've lost any kind of animation on this, but you can still, you know, go through and do whatever other stuff you need. Um, so again, that is not something I would use all the time, but maybe if you needed, like, one little branch or something like that in there um, that was higher detail with, like, some sculpting or something on it, you could do that if you wanted to. Um, the only other thing, and I find this to be useful if you want quads. Um, it's not super helpful all the time, but there's Z-Remesher. Uh, it usually takes longer to process. It's kind of finicky. Sometimes if you have, like, tries or whatever, it'll be weird with your stuff. Um, but that's going to go through and try to apply good topology to your stuff. Uh, whereas the, the Dynamesh works a little bit like the automatic mapping for UVs in Maya, where it's just sort of like, cool, anything facing the x-axis, we're going to smack a grid on that. Anything facing the y-axis, we're just going to smack a grid on that. And wherever they uh, sort of meet, it's like this weird seam of tries, whereas this tries to look a little bit um, at the geometry, and it will do its best to generate topology based on whatever shape of object you're using. Uh, so in this case, probably doing this on a tree was not a super phenomenal idea. It's going to take forever and a half to process this. Um, just know that that option exists. Usually I will use the remesher if I have a fairly like simpler object and I'm wanting to go in and um, you know sculpt on that a little bit, I might Z remesh it after just sort of doing my first initial sculpting. If I've like warped the topology a lot, I'll do this. Um, and it'll go through and sort of set me up with a nice base mesh to work with later. Um, probably not inherently necessary for trees. I just sort of thought that I would randomly mention that. Um, so with that, I think there's actually basically the only real thing that I had to say on trees. Um, I, if mostly just a note if you're in my class, um, I don't really care if you go and you do this um, for background objects to sort of uh, sculpt in ZBrush and then just reduce the mesh. Um, I do not recommend doing this for anything that you would have to like actively deform with a rig or deformers. Uh, these triangulated meshes don't necessarily work super fantastically for that. Um, it's also kind of weird to UV triangulated meshes in my opinion, but that's just personal preference. You can totally do it. Um, it might just take a little bit longer. but. Um, yeah, so that's just like sort of random random thoughts about this. Um, but yeah, I mean, if you guys have like weird sculpted objects or whatever, and you want to just sculpt them in ZBrush and reduce it, as long as it doesn't break your computer or look really janky, I don't really care if you guys do that. Uh, but again, static objects, not anything you'd animate.